Hello and welcome to Face Off here on France 24. After President François Hollande's shock announcement that he will not run for re-election next year, the battle on the left has begun in earnest. A socialist primary election is scheduled for the end of January, but its eventual winner will have to contend with two emerging rivals on the left, Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the far left and Emmanuel Macron in the center. This division bodes ill for the left in the presidential election scheduled for May, especially when you compare it to the unity on the right and on the far right. With me to discuss the left after François Hollande, Stéphane de Vries from the Dutch TV station RTL4 and Philip Turl from our sister radio RFI. So this week is the deadline for the candidates who want to contend in the socialist primary. The early favorite, Prime Minister Manuel Valls, will have to square off with several candidates, most uh, prominently two former ministers, Economy Minister Arnaud Montebourg and former Education Minister Vincent Payon. While Montebourg's bid has been known for quite some time, Valls and Payon were not supposed to run. Let's take a listen to them recently. I have plans for France. I want to unite people. I'm ready. I have the experience. We live in troubling times. You don't just become a candidate for the presidential election like that. Everyone has ideas, but there won't be controversy between us. Anyway, I won't get into that. My only opponent is Fion's hard right policies and the far right. Stéphane de Vries, they were not so be, uh, supposed to be part of uh, the casting, but clearly uh, Manuel Valls is uh, the favorite. Vincent Payon is kind of a wild card. Uh, there are two uh, other former ministers. One I mentioned, Arnaud Montebourg. The other one is uh, Benoit Hamon, who are more towards the left. But it's really very difficult uh, to read the tea leaves for this primary. Yes, absolutely. Um, you said that Manuel Valls is, is now leading in the polls of this primary, but uh, the, he also already participated in the primaries in 2011 when François Hollande won. And then he didn't get more than 6% of the votes. So, um, And he's not very popular within the Socialist Party right now uh, because he's seen as a right wing or at least a centre right uh, um, socialist or not even as a socialist um, so he's very uh, he's, he's been criticized a lot within his own party um, I think it will be much more difficult than Manuel Valls thinks himself to get re-elected even on his Twitter account he's already saying I'm a candidate to the presidential election so he's in his mind he already uh, skipped the step of the primary but this just shows how arrogant he basically is uh, he's overconfident but I think it's a little bit too early to be uh, as confident as Manuel Valls is currently Right. Uh, well, we get to Philip. Uh, we'll take a look at a recent poll uh, taken. This was before uh, Vincent Payon uh, decided to throw his hat into uh, the ring, but it gives you an indication Manuel Valls would come ahead clearly in the first round, but uh, quite narrowly in the second round against Arnaud Montebourg. Philip Turl, uh, what do you think of this very uh, early primary? Uh, panorama, if I should say. Right, well, first of all, I agree with Stefan. It's going to be very difficult for Emmanuel, for Emmanuel Valls to reunite the Socialist Party for uh, the simple reason that he, for the last uh, almost three years, has undertaken a <laughs> policy of um, left left wing policy more towards the right. So many on the left of the Socialist Party can't stand him, uh, notably Martin Aubry, who's the mayor of Lille, who was a former uh, employment minister um, and the lady responsible for introducing France's 35 hour week. Um, has always refused to, to work with him in the government. Others have left the government. The Greens didn't want to work with him when he was nominated as prime minister. So if he's going to resemble, bring all these people together, uh, rally them all behind him, he's going to find it very difficult, which is I think part of the explanation that we have this new contender who suddenly popped out of the woodwork this week, who nobody expected, um, who's Vincent Payon, who's um, a former education minister, who disappeared off the scene when Manuel Valls became prime minister in 2014 and has since become um, a writer of books, uh, is a lecturer He's a philosopher, philosopher. actually. But... Yeah, a lecturer in philosophy. And he's also a member of the <clears throat> European Parliament where he and almost of... never comes, so it's... <laughs> And he suddenly appeared after having said, I don't want any more uh, elected mandates to be a, a, a candidate in the upcoming primaries. So many people have said, well, what's going on here? Why has Vincent Payon suddenly come along to take part in these primaries when we all thought he was totally disinterested in anything to do with politics? So I think that because Manuel Valls is so detested by 
the left within the Socialist Party. There may be some within that left-wing part of the Socialist Party who think we've got to defend François Hollande's values. We've got to defend what François Hollande stood for. Maybe Vincent Payon can do that, and Vincent Payon will be more a, of a left-wing, more friendly candidate who will act as a, uh, a counterpower to, uh, to Manuel Valls. So th that means there is another person who is now going to take part in, in the, these primary elections, along with Arnaud Montbourg. I think that, as the opinion poll showed that you just showed us uh, before Vincent Payot announced his candidacy, Manuel Valls was out in front. But there's still a little bit of a way to go before these primaries take, uh, take place at the end of January. So Manuel Valls has a lot of work to do. He now has another contender to put up with. He also has Arnaud Montbourg on the other side. And outside of that, as you mentioned before, there is uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the far right and Emmanuel Macron, the former economy minister who's on the, in the centre, who are also vying for the, the position of uh, the best candidate to run for the left in next year's presidential elections. So it's not going to be easy. Uh, we'll take a listen to Emmanuel Macron, who was uh, a former economy uh, minister who resigned uh, from the government and who's repeatedly said he would not run in uh, the primary. He wants uh, to be neither left or neither right. He held a big rally in uh, Paris where he was quite enthusiastic. What we want isn't to unite the left or to unite the right. It's to unite all the French. That's our objective. And what I want is for all of you to go and help us win, because it's our program. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Lots of smiles because uh, yeah. kind of uh, over-enthusiastic yeah. uh, Emmanuel Macron, but he's the youth candidate. He wants to present himself as outside every party and outside every boundary. Yeah, I mean, and, no and, problem. And at the end, he was looking up to the sky. Well, maybe he was looking for some divine uh, approval. I don't know. Um, yeah, well, all the candidates now say, I want to... Um, to gather all the people together, we want to bring all the French together. That's my um, that's my goal. But you know, it's it's very it's he is more credible than Manuel Valls because he actually left the government because he did not agree anymore with the uh, with the politics of François Hollande. Manuel Valls has a far more difficult situation because he's responsible for uh, what this government did, and that's that's not a very um, a very nice track record they have. That's also the reason that François Hollande is not going to present himself anymore next year. Um, so Manuel Valls is basically saying, uh, this week he was saying, uh, my candidacy is a revolution. Uh, he apparently suffers from Alzheimer's or something <laughs> far more serious because he has been the prime minister of this country for almost three years. Uh, Emmanuel Macron has always been an outsider. So this is a card Emmanuel Macron can play. Uh, he's also very young, 38 years, which is in French politics really, really young. Uh, and he appeals to a large part of the French population, not large enough, I think maybe 15, 20 percent at best. But still, he is a new face, uh, a young person. Um, ideas that, that could gather people from the right and from the left. So he, he's an interesting contender, yeah, absolutely. He, he's done quite well to get this far. I'll give him his credit. He's, um, I think, pulled off more than he than, than people thought he was going to pull off to start yeah. with. He's, he's got this meeting. He got a lot of people taking part. Uh, one of the, the quips in, in um, I think, Liberation, the French Daily this week, was that uh, after showing himself as being a nice man, he now has shown someone who can actually bite. Uh, remains to be seen whether or not this is just his friends, his fans gathering to give him the support or whether he's actually going to be able to form a party. But he's so polling he's, around you he's know, 15 well. percent, he's doing pretty which well. is not huge, but it's enough mm. it's, to it's, ensure it's that the socialists... It's a good socialist, start for him, yeah, but, but I think you have to remain a bit uh, wary about how far he can go. We'll see. You know, He's got off to a good start. People think he's an encouraging candidate. He's a new man, you know, a young uh, person who's away from the establishment. And I think that's what people in France are looking for right now. Right. Uh, quickly, on, on the far left, there's also someone who's polling 12 to 15 yeah. percent, Jean-Luc uh, Mélenchon. Sure. Uh, he's obviously maybe not a threat for the presidency, just like Emmanuel Macron, but he's a clear threat to the qualification of the socialist candidate for the runoff. 
Absolutely, because it means that Mélenchon and Macron, they will probably have between 20 and 30 percent of the votes. Uh, Marine Le Pen probably 30 percent as well, a few as well. So it leaves 10 percent for all the other parties, including the Socialist Party and the Greens. So uh, it's a very small piece of cake that the Socialists will have to divide. But one thing is clear, um, it, it will be uh, the really end of the Socialist Party as we know it, because if, if you, they probably end fourth or fifth in the, in the first round, uh, which, well, that has never happened in the history of France. So it really shows that the Socialists have a huge problem, whomever their candidate will be. Right. Is there a possibility for Jean-Luc Mélenchon to actually search ahead of the socialist and be a contender? Or do you think no, there's a so. glass I'm, ceiling? I him? really don't think so. I don't think he wants to. And I, I re remain uh, convinced that the popularity of Jean-Luc Mélenchon is to a, a, um, a greater part the lack of another candidate or an alternative candidate by people on the left who don't want to vote for Francois Hollande or don't want to vote for Manuel Valls or don't want to vote for Arnaud Montbourg and they see Jean-Luc Mélenchon as a way out of that. But I don't think he... Jean-Luc Mélenchon certainly does not want to have any agreement with the Socialist Party at all, having been a member of it and left it. He's now... He wants to run for himself on the far left to, just, to see as far as he can go. So he is definitely a threat for uh, Manuel Valls, um, just as Emmanuel Macron is uh, in the centre. So, as I said before, it's not going to be easy for Manuel Valls to, to gather all those people, to rally all those people together. Whereas on the right, they're all behind François Fillon. And uh, on the far right, they're all behind Marine Le Pen. Well, almost all of them behind Marine Le Pen. So they've got to try to rally behind a candidate on the left. And that's what is going to be very difficult because okay. there's a lot of ego in there too. Obviously, as always in, in politics, we'll have to see whether the socialist candidate, whoever uh, that may be, will end up being uh, the ham in the sandwich between Emmanuel Macron and Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Obviously, still lots of time to go. Thank you very much uh, for watching this edition of Face Off here on France 24.